oh, I, d I just love it, and I love the people associated with it, and uh, it just gets in your blood. It's, uh, I've got 21,000 hours of flying time, which is a lot. <laughs> we had a wonderful uh, English uh, teacher, and one of the books that she introduced me to was a book called Wind, Sand, and Stars, and it was about flying. And I just thought it was the most fascinating book I ever read. And it was a beautiful day, blue skies, snow on the mountains. I got on the airplane, and I was the only person on the airplane. And right after we took off, uh, being very curious, I said, do you think that I could go up and see the cockpit? And the flight attendant or stewardess said, uh, sure, I think so. And she said, I'll see if they'll let you come up. They opened the door, and I looked out the front window. This is neat. And the co-pilot said, and I'll never forget it, and he changed my life. He said, if you think you like flying so much, why don't you take flying lessons? And I said, flying lessons? I said, can a girl take flying lessons? And he said, sure you can. And he told me where to go, and it was Clinton Aviation. So I talked to my mother, and I told her I'd been out to check on flying lessons, and she already knew how much I liked it. They were $12.75 an hour and I was making $38 a week. So I got a couple lessons and I had two or three more. And then she noticed that I was, I'd go out once a week. She said, I don't know about this, Emily. I st still think it's kind of foolish. My keynote was always, well, just a couple more, Mom, just a couple more. I said, Mother, guess what? I soloed the airplane. And she said, you mean you went by yourself? And she just thought for a minute and she, she said, well, I guess that's okay. She said, well, maybe these flying lessons are okay. I couldn't believe it. United was hiring pilots with a commercial license, but they didn't have an instrument rating, but they had a college degree. So they gave the, these, these students to us to get them their instrument rating. And I did nothing but a, full, a whole year of teaching, giving these guys an instrument rating. And they already had a job as a pilot with an airline. <laughs> And I had more time than they did. I had 2,500 hours when they had 160. I did kind of get discouraged at one point, and I knew that the airlines were going to hire a woman, and, and it was getting close. I just knew in my heart. And, um, and I thought, you know, if it's not soon, I'm going to miss it. And I looked at Mr. O'Neill, and I said, Mr. O'Neill, I want the job. And he said, well, he said, you have the job, he said. And he said, something very significant. Well, we want it to be good for Frontier, and we want it to be good for you, and we, it should be good for women in aviation, or women. And through the years, I've, you know, I've tried to be a mentor to a lot of young women. And, you know, if you really want to do something, I don't care what field you're in, if you just, just keep working on it, just whatever it takes. I can sum up my a career in aviation is luck and timing. Being lucky enough to fly in an airplane the first time and like it, and the timing of going through being a flight instructor, and the timing through the uh, 60s to where the country was changing their attitude. The timing was just perfect, and it worked out that I became the first woman airline pilot in the United States. My first scheduled flight was on a Boeing 737. It took about a year for me to be really accepted as one of the pilots. One of the senior captains I was flying with called me, oh, you're just one of the fellas, and I knew I was in. In fact, somebody said, what do you want us to call you when I got my captain's position? Uh, do you want a, a woman pilot, aviatrix, uh, what? I said, captain will be just fine. <laughs>